Welcome back to the That... Nope. Welcome back to That Sit Ain't Easy Pod Show. Episode 2. We're doing it! Yeah, I was going to lead you into this episode. Uh, it's an interview with Chad Kulchin. That, uh, he's written shows for big broadcast networks, CBS. Written some books. He's done, uh, what was it, Book of Roses? Is his, whoops, whoops, camera shifted on me. He's done a book on how to win The Bachelor. Uh, he's got another podcast where he just uh, tries to, I guess, patch up those bridges with his family, in a way, the necessary conversations. And I forgot almost all the questions I wanted to ask him, um, all the topics I wanted to discuss. There was only 20 minutes. Uh, I'm new at this, but hey, you got to start somewhere. I was going to interject all these questions and you know, pop into this podcast interview. And I just thought I was going to drown it all out. So we're just going to go go with it. Uh, there is some comedic interjection, but I didn't want it to be this whole explain away this an interview and all the different questions I forgot and jokes I forgot to tell and blah, blah, blah. We'll get to it later. He, uh, he, might, he might be uh, available for another interview in about six months. Because he's doing, he's doing all these different podcasts. You can email him at uh, book chad colchin at gmail.com and that just puts you on the roster or the list to to get an interview with the guy he'll come on your podcast you got to have a podcast though or at least have one in the works like i did <laughs> i had a youtube channel going but not really a technical podcast so uh take it away craig Well, there he Hello. is. How you doing? Can you hear me? I can hear you great. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Excellent. Well, welcome to That's the Dioka podcast. I think I've settled on a name with that. Kind of right. take, take the yoke uh, that life puts on us sometimes and just try to get it off. Dioka. You know what I mean? I love it. Hey, everybody, this is Chad Culture, a freaking famous writer of movies and shows I don't know and if books that's and all that kind of stuff man yeah. i don't know how famous i am but yes i have <laughs> i have done some of these things you're mentioning right on right on well welcome welcome i can't thank you enough i got some notes on my phone here uh all right this is actually a very first for me with the interview over the podcast i've been banking episodes for this but uh i'm, I'm trying to figure out where we'll stick this uh episode in all but right we'll figure it out yeah yeah so how are you doing today not too bad how about yourself yeah. Yeah, I can't complain. A little work this morning. Where are you, and, if I may uh, ask? I'm in Southwest Florida. So Heard of Port it. Charlotte. Yeah. Okay. There's one decent comedy club. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Brian Callen will hit up every once in a while. Right in town here. Um, okay. Vasani's. I haven't I haven't been there yet myself. Um, I am uh, just trying to get into stand up. Uh, okay. It's, it's just a little less than a year now. Um, and how's that going? Dude, it's great. Um, it's like, that's kind of this podcast, I guess, take the yokes off of that life gives you and, uh, and just kind of document this whole journey. Of just, sure. it, you, some people probably call it psychosis. Some people might call it midlife crisis. It's just, I found, I found my passion, you know? So I kind of, anything Great, that inspires dude. me to go look for that kind of stuff. I want to share it. Uh, anybody else yeah. that might be in those thoughts, you know? That's fantastic. So, uh, thanks, man. How are these podcasts going? This is wild. Like, yeah, it's going okay. You get some cancellations. You get some people no-showing. That happens yeah. basically every week. But then you get uh, to meet other people that you never would have gotten to talk to otherwise. Yeah, love, that's cool. That's doing. awesome. I really appreciate you reaching out like that, man. It gives me a little glimpse of hope that this journey <laughs> might be headed somewhere to halfway decent. Dude, I bombed on stage choked just yeah. you know not a whole lot of uh what would you call it i'm sorry i almost i almost started this if i didn't have the trouble <laughs> the zoom i didn't click you in and admit you when you text or emailed yeah. sorry about that no problem but, uh, i think i just lost my train of thought yeah super nervous that's what i was gonna i was gonna answer the call uh, don't be nervous dude <laughs> Look, here's the thing. Whenever you're nervous, at least for me, this is kind of something that has helped me since I was probably 10 years old. Uh, keep telling yourself and remind yourself 
that eventually this entire planet is going to be consumed by the sun and every piece of the collective human endeavor will be reduced to ash. Nothing yeah, matters. Yeah. I feel that. And that's, you know, with this podcast, I explore like consciousness, all, all sorts of stuff. So I, right. I thought I thought we could have a fun conversation on that. Of course, I want to please. I want to let everybody know about your podcast and everything. You've got what uh, Book of Roses. I don't know if you see this little lamp here. I was going to take it out, but it's just wrong around with roses. I said, I'll leave that. Well, there. also, Florida <laughs> is a, a breeding ground for high level bachelor players like Tyler Cameron comes from Jupiter, Florida. And he's oh, look the, at uh, yeah. the Instagram champion, the male Instagram champion, I should say, of Bachelor okay. Nation. Never got into it. Uh, we, we cut the cable a long time ago, and I just never, my wife, no. I, for me, luckily, she's not into it. <laughs> but I think it's awesome what you do, man. But I do think it's funny. That's one thought I had. I thought it was funny that, like you said, nothing matters. And then a doozy podcast here I was going on about like uh, love doesn't exist and stuff. And yet, here you are just coaching people and winning the game of bachelor or whatever. And it's all based on, well, it's supposed to be based on love. So I think that's kind of funny. It almost speaks to, to your intelligence level or, or the amount of thought you put into it. It's like, I'll show you how real love is by gamifying this whole thing. And showing well, they it gamified it. Really it. I mean, <laughs> I'm not the one who turned it into a game. Bachelor I is a game. They, right, true, true. The show maintains the conceit that it is not like that's yeah. part of the lie that that show tells is that this isn't a game. People are coming on here to find love and that's it. But it very clearly is a game. Right. So right. I simply right. just looked at the game, broke it apart, took some statistical data out of it and said, can I build strategies around these repeating statistical patterns that I see? Indeed, okay. I could. And then I tried to put them into practice by coaching players using those strategies and they work very well. That's, That's all I so can gnarly. say. It's, what a niche yeah, you spot can't do to it. find yourself in. That's cool. Yeah. Would you say that? Uh, sorry, I don't know. With all due respect, I don't ever mean to disrespect if this comes off weird. I'm, no, still, learning please, how to, I'm still learning how to converse and stuff. Yeah, but, that's uh, where we all. Oh, my gosh. Was would, would you say that the whole uh, Book of Roses was kind of your platform or your launching pad in a way? To, or, or writing other stuff in, in, before that? Were you already kind of? No, in I Hollywood and five books before How to Win the Bachelor that were all novels. I've written a bunch of movies, TV shows, a video game, oh, wow. graphic okay. novel. Cool. So all that you were already kicked off even before the Bachelor thing. Yeah. And so you got another podcast, Unnecessary Conversations, is it? It's called The Necessary Conversations. The Necessary. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's about. I just heard it because I've been going back to the Doozy Pod show, trying to catch back sure. up again. Yeah, and I was like, I totally missed that the last time I'd listened to you guys. But yeah, so that's, that's yeah. What is that? When I, uh, my sister and I talked to our parents. We we somewhere during the Obama administration, maybe the second term, I think. Uh, we kind of stopped talking to our parents because our parents are like deep QAnon MAGA supporters, and my sister yeah. and I are not. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so it kind of like put a rift in our family and my parents were getting older and I was like, are we really just going to let our parents die and not talk to them for the last 20 years uh, of their life? I gotcha, so sure. I decided uh, the best way to to bridge that gap was to start a podcast where I basically now forced my parents to talk to us for an hour and we talk about politics and uh, oh boy. it's insane. <laughs> yeah. So my, <laughs> my dad is on there talking about how he's going to fight in the race war. And, uh, you know, my sister and I are just kind of like trying to get through it, but it has helped. I don't know if it's repaired our, our family kind of dynamic or not, but we at least talked to each other again. Yeah, it seemed good. like you had mentioned it was helping a little bit there. I could totally relate. I mean, I think anybody could, I would say, uh, I've got a set of grandparents that are probably like, uh, that caliber of relationship where it's like, I don't even yeah. want to talk to them, man. Kind of reminds me of your dad. You talk about your dad, how he. You know, kind of put you down growing up and stuff like that. Nothing was ever good enough for one of my grandfathers. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. If you weren't into politics, like even my grandma would be like, What are you, just a butterfly in the wind? What are you doing down there in Florida? You know, <laughs> right. no, I just don't want to get caught up in all that BS that you guys, as if it matters. You know, I feel like the, the vote. I, the, exactly. Uh, if oh, nuclear well. war breaks out on planet Earth tomorrow and liquefies 100% of the human population, it don't matter. Dude, that could totally happen. That's some scary stuff. Oh, well, hopefully it doesn't happen anytime soon. <laughs> I don't think it will. But I'm just saying, even if it does, the worst case scenario matters as much as the best case scenario in my mind, sure, which sure. is zero. Yeah, I, mean, I can see that. That was a funny uh, little, I don't even know the word for it, but um, 
the fact that like it in your mind or a lot of our minds where it doesn't really matter, but then you still choose veganism. Yeah. Which is cool. I think, and I think it's wild that some people are getting benefits from veganism and they like, listen to Joe Rogan's podcast. It's all about the carnivorism. I guess it's just all individualized, but then, uh, yeah, I don't know. But if it, do you just, you just feel grossed out by the meat. Is that it? Uh, kinda, well, I, at this point, yeah, but I had, kinda. I had cancer in my face and that right, right. led me down a path of kind of learning about nutrition and what foods actually can combat cancer, statistically lower your likelihood of recurrence. And, uh, so I just made a diet based on all those foods, basically forced myself to eat it. And over the course of maybe six months to a year in the beginning of it, I just stopped wanting to eat meat and then it became grotesque to even think about. Um, and that's just where I am personally, I, you know. To yeah, that's own. totally cool. I don't, exactly. I don't give a shit exactly. what anybody else eats or what you choose to do with your life. This is what works right, for me. Right. Amen. And uh, you know, in in contrast to kind of me saying that, like the entire, it doesn't matter if the world blows up. the The flip side of that is, I think if you find things that are personally meaningful to you that give this fucking existence, whatever the hell this is, some meaning yes, to you personally, yes, yes. you have to indulge in those things. Right. Otherwise, right. you you become uh, untethered from reality. Right. And, and then what are you doing? I don't know. And then you're, yeah, asking whoever to help yeah. you out and show you a sign. <laughs> I feel like the big picture to me is always a kind of nihilistic view of the meaninglessness of all of this. But then the the more granular kind of strategy that I use in life is like to find the things that entertain me or make me think about something or feel some type yeah. of way right, and right. explore those things to the fullest. And if I can, you know, figure out how to turn that into a job, like with writing, then I, I will do so. Uh, that's awesome. See? You started off, sorry for this chair. I should have switched it out, but I ran out of time. <laughs> no, like, all right, dude. If you got an echo on your side, I'm sorry. I tried to sound cool. No, this no, room. no. Everything's it good. Just, yeah, right on. It just got uh, converted from our garage. And now we got a new baby girl, September 14th. Oh, congrats. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to, we're not sure what we're going to do with this room yet, but um, makes for a decent studio if I could sound pretty better. <laughs> That's not going to last sure. with the wife. But um, oh, what I love, love, what was I thinking? There's something about. Oh, I thought your veganism might be rooted in love, but mm, I think it's more you're just grossed out. But it's like the way you talk about it sometimes you're like, yeah, but that's like flesh. That's another living being and stuff. And it's almost like, well, do you have that kind of deep rooted seed? Because like you, you have a lot of uh, empathy for everything in a way, you know, like I mean, I, I guess definitely it, like animals. And I think when I was younger, especially in America, the way meat is presented to you, it, it, it tries to separate you from the idea that this came from a living creature that is conscious and has feelings yeah, that's and, a good and point, all that kind right? of shit. Like, what the hell is a chicken nugget? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> they, they grow on they, trees. <laughs> exactly. I think purposefully, uh, many of the food manufacturers, especially American ones, try to like distance you as far as possible from the idea that this was a living creature, especially with cows. You watch all these fucking videos of cows. They're like dogs. Like they come yeah. when they, when their right. name is called, yeah, they're happy to, to see their friends. Out of our hands. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And yet we fucking breed them and put bullets uh, in their fucking head. Not bullets, yeah. bolts. They just bolts, fire a fucking bolt right in, the, in the skull. Sure. Um, you know, and they live in these hostile conditions and stuff. So, I mean, that, that does become a part of it. At least it did for me. Yeah. After a few years of being in those documentaries, man, I've been, ugh. Don't right. Me up. And you can't. Watch them. <laughs> exactly. People can't watch them because they're so yeah. horrific, yet they will eat the product that comes from it. All so right. I think there's like uh, and again, I'm not begrudging anybody eat whatever the fuck you want. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, yeah. for me, that stuff has kind of factored into it, I guess, a little bit, but not. I wouldn't say it's like the reason that I'm vegan by any means. It, it's purely like for health reasons. Health, and yeah. I feel I, I just feel much better. Like when I switched over. Within, I'd say probably like two months, I was like, "Fuck!" Just everything's like clearer, sharper. I don't feel nice. lethargic uh, as I used to when I was just like choking down an In-N-Out double double pretty much uh, every day for. Like, I have yet to try In-N-Out here on the East Coast. I keep hearing yeah. about it. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe better. I don't. No. <clears throat> oh, that's funny. Oh uh, yeah, something else I want to let you know here. Totally safe space and, and a comedy pod show. Hopefully, is what it turns into. So mm. if you need to do any impersonations and not have any ridicule <laughs> you yeah let them out here no, i'm okay i am not i don't really do impersonations in oh my, my regular God. life Dichotomy. it's only when i'm around will because he it's hilarious yeah yeah i can't imagine being that dude's friend all the laughs just non-stop 
It truly is. It yeah. truly fucking is. Yeah, it's yeah. like you're getting a, a personal comedy show literally always. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. I feel like I, I kind of found myself just, just falling into videos. So I used to be in physical therapy, uh, licensed, okay. insured, physical therapist, assistant, seven years. Sure. Um, but you got, I got into home health. That was my favorite. It was less, you know, over overhead or no whatever no micromanaging really you didn't have a boss right over your shoulder all yeah. the time because i had that assistant attached to my title but i come home i have to do the notes for the home health because i couldn't finish them in the house because i'm you got to go hands-on with the patient you got to work with them you sure. can't just sit there typing away and then i get home and i gotta finish all these notes and i'd find myself making just dumb videos instead and trying to develop characters <laughs> come back to my notes a little bit <laughs> and i was just like losing sleep and so that's kind of uh, i guess a big part of what made me choose to just forget all that i'm mm -hmm. assembling tool chest and grills and patio furniture for big box stores like home depot and lowe's now and i'm making almost the same money probably a little less it's all contractor based but i feel better just from doing that like getting away from, i loved helping people i loved making them laugh really was what i was in there doing for the most part but mm -hmm. uh you know, the health insurance, they run out, they don't have the right plan, they can't get enough therapy. And I just, so many people are getting shafted. Like, I didn't even want to be in it anymore, you know? Totally. So I was like, well, yeah, I, I like making people laugh. And I think the best medicine is laughter. So it's like, if I can make people laugh, I think that that's just more fulfilling to me. And uh, that almost relates to the way you're talking about food. So, uh, <laughs> so you don't believe in a God, or I don't know what your spirituality lies or whatever. But during one of these nights where I'm up making these videos and I just, I came to tears because like, I thought it was so funny. And I was like, I got to get this out to people. And, and all of a sudden I felt I'm going to call it an awakening or sure just profound self-awareness maybe, or self-realization that that's what I got to do. Kind of like you said, I don't, I don't care what the fuck you eat. Just go eat what you like and do what you do. Sure. So that's kind of where this spiraled into some kind of uh, direction was just be you and just do you. Who cares if a bunch of people might think you're annoying because you're being silly all the time and they're just serious people. Like just find a different crowd or whatever, you know? So that's, I guess this, totally. this that's what I want this podcast to be is just kind of show Dude, them, showing I, I, that. In, out here in Los Angeles, I've sold, I don't know how many TV shows, a bunch at this point. And there's a question that they always ask you in these fucking pitches for these TV shows. They're always like, who's the audience for this? And my answer has always been and will always be, the audience is me. I am doing uh, this to make myself okay. laugh. Yeah. And if I can't do that, then nobody else is going to fucking laugh at it. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, whatever yeah, I'm yeah. writing, if it's not cracking me up or if it's not hitting me in some type of way, Nobody else is going to give a fuck about it either. And I've never understood that that idea of like building something, thinking of who is my audience and then building entertainment for that audience. Right. Unless you are a part of that audience. Yeah, then I, yeah. It's fine or whatever, you know, but it's like, especially in writing, which is like such a personal kind of fucking thing. It's just shit coming straight out of your brain onto a page. If it's not entertaining you while you're writing it, who the fuck is it going to entertain? Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I like that. I like that. No kidding. Yeah. I, 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 I had a, just a, oh, I don't even think I could do it now because I don't know what I'm doing. I put a flipping into Schwarzenegger. I do that from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. I had some, some videos, a compilation put together of some of the different impressions. <laughs> just, yeah. God, I, I'm just laughing my ass off listening to you guys on that. Even sometimes when I walk outside my house into the garage. I can't help it, and it just comes out, and then. Well, no, man, I just I really one thing I can't stop wanting to say. It kind of gets bottled up. I have to step away from work, um, my wife, the kids, sometimes just to say it because they're not going to know. Tramana! <laughs> ha Yeah. So, so your impersonation. It's the first time I've heard your. Liam Neeson impersonation, and it had me in tears, brother. Because we all do that from time to time. Shed tear. These tears here are of laughter as you sip your Dizzy Hard hard seltzer. Another thing. It's, oh, 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 hold on, brother. Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm trying to switch to, uh, oh, Jesse Ventura. I can't do it.
I've forgotten it completely. I can't, I can't hear it right now. But he's supposed to say that I'm sent from the future to the past now. He had something that he needed you guys to know now instead of in the future, and that is... And that's how time travel works, brothers. That the, uh... Why don't you tell me the secret ingredient? <laughs> Tramana, it's, it's no pink. It's no pink. He puts one microgram of no pink in each batch of his Tramana. And that's, that's how he's getting the masses to follow him. You see, my mind was, uh, my mind was hacked in the future. Eddie, yeah, why don't you tell me? Why don't you tell me? And uh, my mind was hacked in the future. And he sent me back in time. He's unwinded the time of my mind and sent me back here so I could tell you the secret ingredient to the rock's success in becoming the president. Because I've got insider CIA and Navy SEAL. Ah, why don't you tell me experience? Can do this. Oh, but he can do this. You know why? You know why? Do you know what he had for breakfast? Do you know what he... <laughs> Do you know what he had for breakfast? Do you know what he had for breakfast? He had a damn... He... A money for Dada! And they're making the frogs gay! There's so much more. I guess I'll stop there. This is, this is going on. Run on. Flogging. Flogging your mind with a run on flog flogging your mind with a run on vlogging. I don't I've never subscribed to any other Patreon until I oh, came across wow. the Doozy Pod show. I'm not kidding. As I, I know they're all pretty cheap, but I just I wanted more. I wanted more. I like, well dude, I appreciate it sincerely. I'm happy that on. like it's it's making you laugh. You know it makes yeah, us dude. laugh too like I said. Awesome yeah. That's a snaps killer. God I can't even look at my notes here. I was thinking maybe if we ran out of stuff which I haven't gotten anything really, so we're not running out. I was like, we could call some of the comedian friends and just play a prank on them. Like, I got this writer on the line, and he needs some com comedic actors. Sure. Well, blah, blah, blah. you have <laughs> two minutes left of this twenty-minute window, so you Whoa, don't. That flew by. How dude. you want to spend the final two minutes? No, nah, that's good. That's good. We're we're good. Uh, I won't be calling anybody. Congrats on the belt. I wanted to tell you oh, that. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I'm that very proud killer. of that. I'm, I'm, that's, that's another reason for the phone calls. I'm having trouble converting people to the doozy pot show. Yeah. I, I, they, I tell them and they just don't Look. watch it. I ask them again and they haven't watched it. So I was like, what if I call them like one of the freaking hosts of the show? Like you guys need to watch it. <laughs> it ain't for everybody. I mean, no, that's I another know, thing too, yeah, is no. like, especially when you're like making content and shit. I think a lot of people are like, well, why aren't more people liking it and all that kind of shit? It takes time for people to find your shit. And it is yeah. like the only people who are going to like your shit are the people who are going to like it. And that Amen. has to be okay. All right, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. Not everybody has to like it. Not everybody should like it. I feel like uh -huh. yeah. if everybody likes your shit, your shit is real bland. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I guess since we probably got a minute. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Uh, okay. What if AI couldn't figure out if there was a uh, oversoul or uh, higher power couldn't figure yes. it out logistically it's numbers it can't yeah. crunch it can't figure it out so it has to hack into the human mind to try to find that connection to see if it exists period a uh, fascinating idea man yeah huh? we'll <laughs> see what happens with Neuralink and and all the other yeah, kind of like yeah. technology that's merging with humanity in the very near future but yeah. i ha i hate to do this but i have to go because i can uh, go. no Jen, you, Jen, you son of a bitch well well Hold, hold on, hold on a second, too. Chad, what the hell is this show? Chad, 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 just a bitch. <laughs> Literally crying right now, listening to you guys. Episode 39, I think it's Dude's Evening Part 2. Should have been Dude's Evening Part 2. Because you're dosing me up with laughter. Besides the point, Will Sesso is talking about. Free will <laughs> with a <laughs> full of fucking McDonald's. It might have been a bologna sandwich. <laughs> Mandela so effect, you know. <laughs> was also, I think, I don't know, I'm not all into the episode. I think the vegan, Chad, 
is also eating the McDonald's. It was an apple pie for McDonald's. <laughs> He's also episode champion. <laughs> Free and has the belt to prove it. <laughs> Bloody corpses. Go. Another podcast you go. right now. I'm sorry. So thank you so God much, boy. man. Thank you, sir. Pleasure to meet a... you. I want to shake your yeah. hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good rest of your day. Later. Thanks. Bye. Yeah.